Um, but yeah, I mean, so so the the PT side was really started to come down for me. Part of my partly to do with my general enjoyment of it. Mm-hmm. Partly to do with the fact that it was, even though I was really well paid personally, um, for the amount of work I put in to run a team and keep a team busy and all of that kind of yeah. stuff, it was far less lucrative than the other stuff I was doing. Yeah, you know, my one to one clients were paying me fifty grand a year, yeah. and you know, kind of. It, I'm having to work really, really hard to earn the same kind of money out of, out of an entire team. So, yeah, you know, that didn't make yeah, much yeah, sense. Yeah. At the same time, I was, I was kind of kicked in it, kicked in the nuts by PTSD. Yeah, let's talk about this. Yeah, because um, we've never even talked about this, me and you. No, no, not I mean, really. In never, depth, it's no. not really. We haven't really talked about it in depth. So, PTSD. Talk us, talk us through this, man. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, I had a fairly traumatic upbringing in lots of different ways. Yeah, um, but I, I think the. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think the the bit that triggered the PTSD for me was related initially to the tsunami. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the tsunami, like literally in the water in the tsunami, carrying dead bodies in resus- Thailand, yeah, in Thailand, resuscitating people, holding bits of bodies together, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and obviously that was that was traumatic at the time. But it was one of those things that I'm I'm kind of I come from an ex-military background. I've been trained for a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I kept my calm. I kept my cool. Um, came back from it a little bit shook up, but nothing major. And life carried on. Dude, and stay stay in this tsunami experience yeah. for a little bit because I know you. It was a traumatic as fuck experience because you were saving lives. Yeah, people were dying in your arms, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and including you know, kind of seeing dead babies and all kinds of stuff. You know, yeah. so it was that was that was. It was shocking to go through at the time, as yes. anyone who says it, it yeah, says it is. But yeah. I think part of my part of my training just kind of kicked in, and I was very while I was boots on the ground, I was very matter of fact. I would, yes. you know, I'd see people, I'd tell, I'd take con- control of the situations yeah. I was in. You two grab this, you do that, mm-hmm. carrying things and yeah. bodies and all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so you were able to compartmentalize it, would you say? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that's one of the things that the military does for you. It trains you to keep going in during stressful anxious even fully traumatic times because you just go what needs to be done and the, your brain kind of starts to break things down into there's an outcome i want yeah there's something in the way of the outcome yeah. how do i address the obstacle to the outcome yeah, mechanical and, yeah. yeah and it, yeah. it is very it's very process driven mm-hmm. I and mean, that's what the military try you know yeah. they train you to do that constantly yeah um and that's really what what happened to me during the tsunami and you know because we were we were walking onto the beach my we'd just flown over from australia we'd spent a month in the australian outback um we'd spent a month in the australian outback yeah. and um we decided you know it was it was wonderful like we'd been everywhere we'd done so so many different things yeah. but we decided we wanted to kind of sit on a beach for a little while um so we kind of as a last minute because we were supposed to fly home from sydney yeah. and i said oh fuck it let's go and Go and, go and fly to fly to Thailand and spend a week in Thailand. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we landed on the on Christmas night, and we got in. We got in late. Mm-hmm. Woke up the next morning. Kind of the kids were just being a real pain in the ass. They were arguing with each other yeah. and fighting and all. And so I'd, I'd I'd had a real go at them and said, you know, kind of you're ruining it for us all. And yeah. but as it turns out, if they hadn't ruined it for us all in that first bit in the morning, we would have been on the on the beach about half an hour earlier, and oh, we shit. would have been hit by the wave. Yeah. As it happened, we were just walking on to the beach, yeah. and we suddenly saw the wave come in, and people go flying. How many of everywhere. your kids were with you then? All of them. All of them. All, All of four, them. yeah. Yeah. Um. So we, you know, we turned, we ran. We happened to be. We were just so fortunate. We were the only hotel in. It's a very flat area along that along that stretch, but yeah. we were the only hotel that happened to be on a hill. Mm. And so we ran into the hotel car park, and it's literally at the height of the hotel car park is where the water stopped rising. Jeez. And so we got the kids safe. We put them in, put them into the hotel room, yeah. and then I went back out into into the water and kind of started started helping people. Yeah. Um, we because we'd been on the road like in the outback, we had a med kit and all that kind of stuff with yeah. us. So we set up like a first aid station in the hotel lobby, and I I was just kind of going out and bringing bodies back and yeah. bringing people back, and yeah. you know Dina, my wife, she was there kind of bandaging them up and kind of comforting them and all that kind of stuff and. You know, once a few people start doing that, kind of it creates like a bit of momentum, and so then it was it wasn't like just us two yes. were, were saving saving Thailand, you know. Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but but certainly certainly that sort of like started a flow yeah. of of people that were kind of getting involved in in rescuing people. You could yeah. say, yeah, um, yeah. So I mean that it, that was a that was a major thing. Um, I had a good cry that evening after after it was you know kind of you know. Yeah. I'd be, I'd literally been a rock, and I went up in, into the into the hotel room, sat down on the bed, and just like burst into tears. Yeah. Um, 
quite cathartic though. And we were all in shock, but yeah, we stayed there for a lot of people left and we stayed there for the whole week that we were due to be there. Yeah. Um, and we just kind of, we, you know, we kept interacting with the local community. We yeah. were out on the beach every day, kind of clearing away debris and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So, um, we stayed, we came back, um, back to the UK and about a year later, or just a little bit more than a year, um, basically I got a phone call at work and, um, it was about my brother and my brother had basically, um, he was, he used to, he was an alcoholic. Um, he kind of various, um, periods of really cleaning himself up yeah. and then letting it go and clean yeah. himself. And, and at one time he, he tried to stop cold Turkey from, from, uh, from alcoholism. It's apparently it's one thing you can't do. Like with, if you're on opium, if you're on any other kind of, you can more or less stop cold Turkey. If you're a really high level drinker, it can really screw you up. So he basically made himself an epileptic as a result of, Shit, as a result of that. Yeah. Um, so, so one, one day I got a call at work and basically it was, it's your brother. I go, I go, we hadn't seen him for a while, which was actually quite normal. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, basically he was, he was dead on his sofa. Shit. Um, I, I went into his house and he was like badly de he was like a, like a zombie, really? um, black Fucking and blue hell. and decomposing and all kinds of stuff. And that's, yeah. so obviously that was traumatic. That's two things in a very short period of time. Yeah. Weirdly enough, like at the time it felt like work saved me. Like I dived more or less straight, but now I realize I was just kind of masking things and, yeah. and you put a burying it. I, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't really want to face it. So it was business as normal. Went, I, I was back in work the next day, literally working with clients. Yeah. Um, and yeah, all of, all of that was highly traumatic and, and within a fairly short space of time. Mm -hmm. And it was around about this time, or shortly, actually, no, not not immediately, about three years later, is when the PT studio business started to lose a lot of its luster for me. Yeah. And when I started realizing just how badly I was being ripped off by people that I really trusted as members of my staff and how, how much I was being screwed over. So yeah. work got really stressful. And it was like the, the stress at the studios opened the floodgates for the PTSD. Yeah. It was like you'd boxed it all up and pretended, yeah, I'm, I'm a... You know, I, I wasn't doing it out of any form of bravado. I wasn't saying, oh, this doesn't affect me. I just didn't want to have it. Yeah. Right. And I, yes. <laughs> I didn't want it. Obviously, no one wants it to affect them. Yes. And yeah, suddenly, you know, it's one of the ways I describe it is like a like a bucket, you know, kind of when when that bucket keeps getting uh, getting full, eventually it gets to the top and, the, and it, it overspills over the brim. That's when you have like the breakdown, that flood. And that's kind of what happened for me. The the studio became this kind of constant drip on an already three quarters full yeah, bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it when it reached the top, when it when it overflowed is when I when I kind of got the PTSD and I was driving, uh, driving home from work one day, I was driving down the M11. And I literally, like, it, as clear as day, saw a body like fall out of the sky, land on the on the bonnet of, uh, bonnet of the Land Rover, and I, I I spun and like did like a like a three sixty on the on like completely turned the car around, um, pulled over on the on the hard shoulder like everyone's going nuts at me. I pull yeah. up, pull over on the hard shoulder. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Look around. Like I was, I could have sworn there should be a body laying in the road or on the car. There's Shit. nothing there. And then little things like I, you know, I'd I'd get micro flashbacks of just like sit. I'd be sat there having a conversation like this, yeah. and then in the corner of my eye, I'd, I'd like see a see one of the bodies from the scene. I didn't connect it at first. I'd just see something, and I go, yeah. no, no, there was someone there just now. Yeah. And then so that the kind of thing happens in movies quite a lot. Yeah. I didn't, but it's a real thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it was real for me. <laughs> I yeah. can't speak to anyone else's experience. Yeah, yeah, but it, was, yeah. it was real for me. Yeah. Um, and then then that became multi-sensory so I'd, I'd hear things and i'd i'd smell decomposition and stuff like that in a room i'd walk in and like i'd, I'd almost gag it would be like some there's either something dead in here or something was dead in this room that's yes. what it'd feel like to me yeah um and it was it was one of those weird compartmentalization things again i could work with you as my client and i could be training you everything would be fine mm -hmm. i'd go back up to my office i'd sit down 10 minutes later i'm kind of getting a flashback and it, they they built so up it's kind of like when you're and this is a guess it's kind of like when you're consciously doing something you can can't mentalize yeah. it but then as soon as your unconscious kicks in that's when all that started yeah 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 it was exactly like that yeah. so I, I my my strategy then became even more of what i was doing before which was to keep myself really busy yes. yeah right and I, I was literally doing everything you yes. know um everything i could to keep my brain busy yeah and it ended up to the point where, because I, I was having major nightmares, uh, like waking up in the night screaming and yeah. like kicking around and throwing my arms around, you know, the amount of times Dina got Jeez, accidentally Dina's only tiny me. as well. She's tiny, yeah. Um, 
and yeah, so that was, there was a lot, a lot going on, um, a hell of a lot going on, mm. and it got to it got to the point where I was, I think, for a year and a half, I my average, uh, my average night sleep for a year and a half was about ninety minutes. That's sure. what I slept. Um, and you know, you always hear about this. You can go crazy if you if you don't sleep enough. Mm -hmm. I was definitely kind of losing the plot. I'd, I'd sit up sometimes. I'd just stare at the wall in my bedroom. I'd be sat on the edge of the bed and I'd stare at the wall in the bedroom and burst into tears for no reason. Yeah. And so my, you know, my family had to kind of put up with that. But somehow I was still able to. I had at the time I had one of my no I had my very best financial year ever um during busy. all of that because you're so I, busy because i kept busy i didn't yes. ever want to stop yes um but i also run myself into the ground and, and I, I piled on loads of weight i mean i'm still a, i'm a big guy now but it's mostly muscular but yeah. kind of when i got to about 18 and a half stone um not through really bad uh really bad food or anything like that mostly part mostly through through lack of sleep and then if i really did need to sleep uh, it'd be it started out like i'd drink a bottle of wine a couple of times a week because uh, at least it, it'd be more like passing out sleep yes then it turned to i'll drink a bottle of wine every night of the week and then i turned to i'll drink a, two bottles of wine because one bottle was not doing it enough because yeah. the right? size right size yeah of, size of your body yeah. right you know and, and then you know at, some, at one point i ended up on like three bottles of wine or wine a week for, for the better part of six and months mate, were you trying to solve all of this on your own to begin with, because you're a very proud guy. Yeah, yeah. To begin with, I definitely was. Yeah. Um, I didn't need anybody's help. Yeah. Right. Kind of yeah. didn't want anybody's help. And you don't want to put on to people. You don't want to. You don't want to put it on to your family, right? Yeah. 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 And I and that. I also also sense it that you know, and it it was definitely a level a level of arrogance, but because of because of my background and yes. the work that I do with my you know I, was I shouldn't a, be like I was this. a best selling author of a mindset book, right? <laughs> kind of the, yeah. you know all of that kind of stuff, and I I teach you around were coaching the, people, yeah, and I'm like. Yeah, like there's there's no one out there going to be able to do what I do, <laughs> right? Like, why yeah, am I going to pay? It? But of course, you know, you can't you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Even mm -hmm. even if, a I've I've come to terms with the fact that that's a that's just arrogance, right? But but even if it wasn't arrogant, even if it was true that I happened to be fucking Tony Robbins level of of changing millions of lives around the world. Oh. Tony Robbins can't treat Tony Robbins. Yeah. Right. By the way, I'm the next Tony <laughs> Robbins, just so you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but mate, do you know that that thing that you said there? We're gonna have to timestamp that. That you can't see the picture of you in the frame. I'm stealing the shit out of that, just right. so you know. <laughs> Actually, we'll edit that out and we'll pretend that I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were trying to solve it on your own, and yeah, yeah, trying to solve it on my own, really getting nowhere. And like yeah. it came to a point where, uh, you know, Dean and my wife really supportive, and she would. She would say, right, you need time alone. Get on a plane, go here. Get on a plane, go there. And mm. she'd just keep, you know, whenever whenever I reached the, like a really dark point, and I, I was getting increasingly darker. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah, increasingly darker. Yeah. Um, which is really unusual for me. Obviously, yeah. you've, you've known yeah. me a long I've time. A long I'm, time. Yeah. Um, I'm a, what most people would consider an optimist, right? Yeah, and uh, you're a level-headed. Yeah, I'm kind of. There's no, you're not like me where it's fucking. Psh, yeah. I, I'm I still like that now, but you're. I mean, I, I do, I do have rage in me. I have a, I have a lot of rage historically, but yeah. I, over the years, I've learned how to yeah. moderate and modulate it yeah. so that it serves me. 